Hello everyone, and a good day to all of you. Wanted to do a video today to test Atsuko UV Killer. Now, I'm particularly interested in this because I'd read uh, a lot of forum posts from quite a few years ago claiming that this would have an effect on IR remission. So, what I have here, what I'm going to be testing this with, is I have, first off, to actually test if the UV Killer does anything at all, I do have a blaze orange hat that has an issue in UV. Second, I have a Gorka 3 jacket, as well as uh, these Airsoft Cry G3 clones, which both do not have an issue in UV, however these have an issue in IR. Now my main reason for doing this is that I'm really skeptical of a lot of those claims that people keep saying that somehow UV killer is going to have any effect, which I'm already skeptical if it'll even do anything with UV, but especially for it to have an effect on IR, because IR and UV are on completely two separate sides of the spectrum. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I, my own personal bias is probably not going to do much, but as I said, there is a lot of posts out there, so it kind of made me wonder why are so many people saying this uh, if it doesn't actually do anything, but we'll find out. So I am going to try to give this a fair chance, and I am going to do everything correctly according to their instructions. This is a combination of their sports wash as well as their UV killer. Uh, if nothing else, their sports wash will probably be pretty good because it doesn't have any brighteners, which can cause issue even on clothes that don't have an issue in IR remission uh, to prevent it from happening when you clean it. So. That, at the least, will probably be pretty good, but um, we'll just see. So, the way that they, not, I'm not going to read all of these instructions, but basically I do need to wash all this stuff in the sports wash first, and then apply the UV killer, which I'm going to do, and then uh, I'll cut to testing again, just showing the before and after for this Blaze Orange hat. We'll see if it had any difference there, and uh, then I'll also put on an IR illuminator, and we'll see how the Gorka and these airsoft pants do. So I just got all three of these washed in sports wash and then applied the UV killer. Now I did kind of change how these are folded up, I wanted to mention that to actually test if this made any difference, I only applied the UV killer to about half of this, hence why I folded this up a little bit weirdly. And uh, I only applied the UV killer to the knee pad part, this kind of stretchy part of that, uh, but I did apply it to the entire hat over there. So. First off, as I said, let's go ahead and see if the actual UV has been changed at all. So I'm going to turn the lights off and then we'll test this with the black light. So we're probably not going to see a difference. I'm mostly just checking if the UV killer potentially made anything worse. Here on the uh, Gorka first, you can see it's, it's the same. No issues there. Um, also no issue on the pants, but already I'm seeing this is still glowing. This is identical to what it was before. So that really didn't have any effect. I did want to also mention um, their instructions on applying the UV killer here. Um, on the box itself, it does mention that you can apply this when it's dry or damp, but on the UV killer bottle itself, it does say to do this when it's damp. So I applied this all when it was damp and uh, applied quite a bit of it too. Um, and it doesn't appear to have done very much. So I don't have high hopes for the IR segment, but I'm going to go ahead and switch to that now. Um, not with the hat, uh, just with the pants and with the Gorka, and we'll see if there's any difference there. Starting with the pants, you can see, I already looked at these through the same night vision optic that you're looking through now, and I'm really not seeing any difference whatsoever. I do have the illuminator on right now at the highest setting. Uh, similarly, with the Gorka, uh, it is the right side as well as the full hood that I had applied the UV killer to, so the left side is totally untreated, and right side plus hood is all treated with that UV killer. Now the reason I, I did want to try both the Gorka as well as those pants is because they are a different type of material. The pants, uh, the part that was kind of glowing there um, was kind of a spandex material. On this it's more of a tarp material, I believe it's actual tarpaulin here. So you can see really no different between the untreated and the treated side. Now maybe that's because of the material difference but uh, both these pieces of clothing kind of both don't exhibit any changes and neither did the hat under the black light either which is how they recommend you test the UV so um, that has been a kind of interesting and unexpected result uh, I did probably sound kind of biased towards this at the start and well I guess with good reason ultimately because it didn't work at all I wasn't expecting it to work in IR but uh, I actually was expecting it to work in UV so I'm kind of surprised that it didn't do literally anything in either case. I did follow their instructions to the T. Um, 
just didn't do anything. Um, I might try a few more of these tests just myself. So I am recording this after the fact, as you can probably tell, because I'm dressed differently. I was testing a bunch of this camo with the uh, UV killer as well. And uh, yeah, pretty much all of today I was testing and just researching a bunch of stuff about this UV killer and watching other videos on YouTube about it. And ultimately, um, I, I tried a lot of different combinations. For example, I did try just soaking, uh, specifically on this hat, I tried pretty much just soaking it in UV killer. Uh, they recommend on the instructions to kind of brush it in, which you saw me doing that initial footage with a cloth. Uh, and it didn't do anything. Now, I did want to actually end up recording this uh, because you might be wondering, if you read Atsuko's site on this, they do talk about, so with the UV remission, they always mention it's being like a bluish light because that is the color that is kind of coming back from the uh, UV light, just like you can see right there. So one way that they recommend you test it is actually with a sheet of paper, which I did. So. These actually will end up having the same effect, but I decided I'd show both of these anyway. So you can see here, here's a piece of paper, and I actually did already apply a bit of Atsuko UV Killer. What I've found is that this works when it's wet, which is pretty much useless, because once it dries, it goes back. So as I said, I already treated this paper, but I'm going to go ahead and retreat it, and I'll do the same with this hat, and you'll go ahead and see what happens. And uh, later, of course, uh, once it dries, no matter what I try, it always stops working entirely as if I never even applied this. So I will get the visible light off and then I'll show you this with the black light. So I'm going to start with the paper right here. So you can see first, there it is in the uh, black light. You can kind of maybe see where I applied some uh, UV killer, maybe ever so slightly right there. But uh, when I go ahead and apply this again, so I had to set that back up because of course a breeze, even though there's no wind today, of course a breeze came in right as I wanted to spray this and record it. So you can see that. That is working significantly better now when it's wet. But the second I let this dry, it's gonna go back to normal. Now, again, uh, you might think kind of weird that this is having a orange glow rather than blue, like Atsuko was saying, but same sort of thing applies here. If I go ahead and spray this, you can already see that it's going kind of like a purple hue, um, but it's not glowing, it's not reflecting the UV here as I spray it on. But this is, uh, I think, the fifth time I'm doing this, and uh, I mean, already as it dries, it's starting to not work again, so not very effective. And I'm going to do this one more time, just now that I've got the uh, camera closer so you can see this a bit better. So black light again and you can already see like I said that this is dry just a little bit and it's already not effective again but spraying it here on the paper so you can see how it's darkening up and it's not reflecting the UV light there. Looks a little worse on the camera actually it is pretty effective at least right now as it's wet but as I said this dries so quickly it doesn't really matter and then yeah same here on this hat. As you can see, in all of Atsuko's uh, material showing this in action, they were using actual camo that has an issue with UV remission and not blaze orange. So I do wonder if all blaze orange would kind of show the same way as this is. Um, but yeah, that's why it's not glowing kind of blue like this paper is. But uh, Either way, I think, uh, you know, when I first did this video, I was kind of worried that I was doing something wrong, but uh, it does seem to be actually just kind of not effective at all. So I think that is pretty conclusive now. Kind of uh, surprisingly does literally nothing whatsoever. As I said, the sports wash is still good because it doesn't contain optical brighteners. If you are interested in a just, you know, a detergent that doesn't contain it so you don't mess up like good cries or anything like that, cry G4s, G3s. Um, there's a site, Army Study Guide, that I go to occasionally that has a full list. A uh, little bit outdated, but uh, it does have a full list of detergents that don't have optical brighteners, so you could check that out if you're interested in that for this sort of thing to not have, uh, to not make it have any issue. But um, so. 
I do believe that uh, unless, unless some of the stuff I do off camera happens to have any better result, I think that this is kind of it. It just doesn't do anything. So thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions on this or if you think I did something wrong or if there's maybe some trick to it that they don't mention, uh, do feel free to let me know. I'll probably end up looking at like some of those photography sprays and stuff like that because I am interested in seeing if there's something I can treat this with to get it to work and I've heard that those can help with the IR emission. Uh, so maybe, we'll see. As far as this, well, you've seen how this turned out and I'm kind of not impressed. But take care and I'll see you all in the next one.